something else and then put them down so that somebody else can read it. But the actual Word of God <coughs> is the very Word that came from God. That's why people call it the Word of God. Not because it's something godly and it just talks about God, but because God breathed that Word from His own mouth. So many of the writers that wrote in the Bible were actually writing as something that God inspired in their hearts. And God spoke to their hearts, so then they put it out there and wrote it down for others to see. That's what the Bible is. It's powerful. It's impacting. It does amazing and wonderful things. And you know what it says about you? It says that each of you are more than what you see. It says that each and every single one of you have something else going on that you don't see normally. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about. We want God to give us His eyes. Because, you know, when God looks at us, He sees something different. When God looks at you, He doesn't just see, hey, Donovan, there's Donovan. See, when He looks at Donovan, He sees something even more. He doesn't just see this physical person standing in front of us. He sees your life. He sees your spirit. He sees your past, your present, your future. He sees all your potentials. He sees all your gifts, your talents, your abilities. He sees everything that He placed inside you. When you gave your life to the Lord, He placed His Holy Spirit in you. And He sees how that Holy Spirit is going to grow inside of your heart and just interact with all your gifts and abilities and use them in special and incredible ways. Anointing, that's all. God sees that. God sees that. And He sees that in every single one of you guys. He sees it way before any of us do. Sometimes he might show you a little glimpse, a little glimpse here and there, but ultimately we don't get to awesomely, we don't get to see this huge picture of everything that happens for our entire lifetime. How much easier would that be? <coughs> if we're going through something difficult, we're like, eh, no big deal. I already saw how it ends. No big deal. Yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I know. I see how this is going to turn out. But then we have more faith. Then we have more faith. Boom. Boom is right. <laughs> What then would we have faith for? It wouldn't be. You see, here's one of the big things, guys. God is less interested in just you getting to know Him. God is not, He is less interested in just trying to help you out. God is less interested in just trying to be there for you. I'm not saying He's not any of those things. He is. But what He is most interested in forming you into the creation that He intended you to be. Forming you into the very life that He placed you on this earth for. The very purpose, the very, the very vision, the very thing that He put inside of your life. He desired for each and every single one of you guys to have some kind of an impact before you leave this earth. You see, God never created anyone simply be walking drones going through this normal life, this rat race that everybody does, the same little thing. You get up, you wake up, you get up in the morning, you go to school. What happens? Let's go through all life for a minute. You're bored. You cry. You eat your food. You learn how to poop. You don't get on the couch. You learn how to pee off of his dresser. You learn that one. You're not making water fall down the stairs. We're not going there. Learn, you know, what colors are which, and you get to learn how to be friends with the person next to you and not, not put your hand on their face. You know, you get to learn all these different things. Some of you need to learn that still. Um, and then you go to first grade and start learning your math, and you start learning all these, these your English, and you start learning your vocabulary and your spelling, and then you, you keep on going, and as you go, you go to your next grades, and you get you, you get a little bit more knowledge of how the world works. You get to high school, and you get to do crazy things like government and economics. And, and, Social studies, and then and then you get to you know eventually you get to go to you get to go to college, and then when you go to college, then you, you learn how to do a trade, or you learn how to have a special skill set like a doctor or a lawyer, or you, know, you get to learn how to if you go to certain automotive schools, you get to learn how to work out cars, you get to do these things, and then after that you go out and you get a job, and then you you know you get this is how the world works today, you know you go out you get a job along the way you might have a girl or a guy or somebody that you. 
family is quite chill out with, you know, they might be your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and, and you know, and the way the world works is most often you, you, you move in with them, and, 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 and then you, you, you do things that we're not going to talk about right now. And then you have a baby, and then you decide to get married after that, that's the way a lot of it's been so far. Or maybe you get married first, you know, and then, but you're usually a couple years out, you're trying to figure out your career, you know, your life, of course, so then you, then you get your career in place, and then you kind of, you go through your career, and you work really hard, you try to get promotions, and you try to get, you know, the better spots, you try to get skills that, that get you to a better job, so you get more money, so that you can, you know, you can have your wife, and then you have your kids, and then you can, you, you can get that great house, you get that great car, and then, you know, at the, at the end of it all, then you get a chance to retire, you know, later on in life, and you get old. Yeah, then you, then you get all that when you work for it, you just kind of, you kind of have like an old person party days all the time, and you get to, you get to take your car to Florida, and you, you totally rock that sucker out. My grandparents are going to do this on that note. Um, <laughs> then eventually, you know, your body starts to fail you, and then, and then you do this life, and, and, the, and that's what people would call normal. But that's what people would call normal. Our generation of people are tired. Doesn't matter. I don't care about that crap. I don't know. I don't care about that. Who cares? All I know is that that right now, guys, as I'm looking at that, that right now is your basic normal life. That's that's your normal life. Normal. So let me ask you something. What about that sounds exciting to you? Retirement. <laughs> Retirement? Can I just can I just be honest with you real quick? Just with everybody here in the room, everybody just pay attention to what I'm talking about, and not anything else for Smith. But I just asked the question, you know, what sounds exciting to you? And Jordan actually gave a pretty honest answer, which is retirement. I'm excited for marriage and having kids. Amen. Marriage and having kids, stuff like that. Marriage first. Oh darn. Check it out though. Listen. Let me let me just tell you something. At the end of it all, the normal life, just looking at things the way the world kind of places you in the system, the way you're supposed to do things, the way you go about your business in this life, the goals that the world sets for you, at the end of it all, you just die and you do, there's nothing. What do you have to show for it? I may crush those dreams, but I'm going to build some new ones. Check it out. Here's one question. Here's what I'm going to do. I think that the best part, I think the best part of life would be why those things are kind of horrible and bad, but being on your deathbed and being able to, I know that sounds sad, but being able to look back in life and be like, hey, guess what I did? I lived life. That is so depressing. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Let me just tell you something, though, guys. Let me just tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something with this. When you die, oh. you don't, <laughs> listen, you don't get to take anything that you built with you. Can you go listen to them? Jordan, you you so you can't be homeless and live on a park bench. Listen, guys. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Listen to okay. this. At the end of it all, that job that you work for, yeah, I might have gotten your money, but you don't take money when you die, and you don't take a job when you die. College, listen, I'm not saying anything against college. Go to college if you need to go to college for whatever you're going to do in life, but your degree isn't going with you. You're not going to carry that on to, the, to this, you know, when, when this life is done. Can I be honest with you? I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be horrible about this, but usually when you die, you, you're not taking your kids with you either. You're not taking your husband and your wife. You're not taking anything with you when you just live life the way that the normal says it. But here's what I want to propose to you. I want to propose this thing to you guys that what God desires in your own personal life is that you live a life in such a way that when you leave life, you do take something with you. That you do have something to show for it at the end of it all. And it's not just a paper. It's not just a... Uh, how much is in your bank account. It's not how many kids or how many people you knew or, or any of those things. Everything comes down to something different. Because I want to read you this scripture real quick. This is 2 Corinthians chapter.